Hey everyone, and welcome to the fifth video of the mobile development series in Unity. If you are new to the series, well, it's about creating a new game from scratch that will be released on Android and developed in Unity. I will show you how to handle touch controls, UI buttons, canvas settings for all screen resolutions and more. In addition to that, a mobile game needs ads and in-app purchases for monetization, analytics to keep track of all data, and of course a login function with Google Play in order to have access to leaderboard, achievements and saving and loading to the cloud in case someone gets a new phone or loses his old one but so obsessed with the game that he needs to continue on a new device. Definitely not me. All of that and maybe more will be covered in this series together with tutorials about game development and devlogs. With that said, consider subscribing if you haven't done so. And I know you haven't, because believe it or not, I have access to all analytics of my channel. Yeah, that's right. And look at this. If you are here, move your little ass and down here right now. It's totally free and it really means a lot to me to have your support. Because not free is my Patreon, where you can have access to all project files and the project itself, together with one-on-one -on -one calls on the exclusive Discord channel with me to help you out. All of this and more with just 250 per month. It's a steal, so hop on on Patreon and grab your membership. So in today's episode, as you can see, I worked a bit more on the sprite assets and the difference is huge. Comparing before and after, we clearly have a winner. I also took a lot of inspiration from the ledges in Pokemon game. Well, if there is a plural form of ledge, maybe, and designed a similar version for this game. Since our sprite sheet was already cut, some empty tiles were replaced with a new ledge. They are available even in the tile palettes window, making it super easy to select them and start drawing on the screen. Since I want to somehow interact with this object or obstacle, I create a new tile map object and name it obstacles. The grass is on the ground layer, so we set the same thing for the obstacles but with a higher order. This will make sure that all obstacles are always in front of the background sprites. Looking good, right? But as for now, the ledges are just decoration and we can simply walk over them both ways up and down. The truth is that I struggled a lot to achieve the jump over a ledge mechanic that's so famous in Pokemon games. You can't pass from below, but you can jump over it from above. Should be easy, right? No, it wasn't. First thing we need is a tile map collider 2D. It will create a collider around each and every tile of this tile map. Next, we also add a rigid body 2D and make sure to change the body type to static, since we want no physics to mess with it. The next step is very important. Assign a composite collider 2D and in the tile map collider check used by composite. If you watch carefully, what it does is to merge all separate colliders of each tile into one. And that's what we are looking for here. Now in order to actually collide with a ledge, at first I thought about having a box collider on our character, but it would cause a lot of trouble in the future. That's why we are going to do it in code. We are going to build on the character move script from last time and add a public tilemap obstacle variable. Note that the Unity engine.tilemap library is needed to access this component. After this, in the update function, we assign a new variable of type vector3int and name it obstacle map. A vector3int is a representation of 3D vectors and points using integers. Yeah, that's some big brain stuff. As difficult as it sounds, it will actually help us and it's also very easy to use. It will be equal to our obstacle style map dot world to cell. Now world to cell needs a vector input and the idea of this script is to check what type of tile the next one is before moving there. If it is an obstacle, we can't move, obviously. So how do we check the next tile in front of us? Easy, we already have a move position variable that is the target position of our movement based on the direction button that we pressed. Copy and paste the same line of code above the vector3 int and comment out the movement part below. Ok, we managed to get the tile in which we are going to move into. Now with an if statement we check if obstacles.getTile with obstacle map input. Mm, I don't like how it sounds so I'm renaming it to obstacle map tile 
since it's referencing only one tile of the obstacle tile map. Much better now. To sum up what we have done so far, we get the position of our next movement and convert it into a cell unit of unity. Here a tile. We then access this tile from our obstacles tile map and check if it's null. Null means that there is no object and we can move freely into our next position. To do so, get the lines of code from below, except the move position, because we already have it and paste them inside of the if statement. Save and back in Unity, we assign the tilemap game object to our script. It kind of works, but not good enough. A really great way of debugging and actually seeing what's going on is to use the onDrawGizmos function of Unity. This will allow you to see things that otherwise were well hidden. I want the color to be red and I choose to draw a sphere. But what's fair and where? Who am I? Obviously we want it to appear on our move to position. The position we are moving to when we click a direction button and the size should be about 0.2. Great, here is it. If I click right, it moves to the next tile right of me, checks if it's an obstacle and if not, I move there. Like the video right now if you think the method is just epic. Right now the problem is that the sphere and therefore our move check is not exactly in the middle of the tile. The x axis is ok, but on the y we have a problem. This happens because our trainer's start position is slightly moved on the x axis in order to have him in the middle. You see 0 would have him on top of a line and that's nothing we want. To solve the problem we hop back to our script and subtract from our move to position a new vector 3 with 0.5 as the y value. Same goes to our vector 3 int variable. Perfect, we managed to move the sphere in the middle of our tile. Now it looks really great and it feels much greater. By moving up and down every time our sphere enters the ledge it prevents us from moving into it. Our detection system is top. One last thing, remember how we commented out this if statement? Now we need it to be active again. Delete everything we have inside it and replace it with everything we have above it. It's just a check to see if our movement vector is not zero in order to get a new move to position. Also if you don't like red you can change the gizmo color to any other color you like, even the size of it. With a system like this, it's very easy to detect whatever is on the next tile that we want to move to. We can detect buildings, walls, NPCs or the end of the map. Next time I will show you how to jump over the ledge from only one direction and I'm going to add a new building such as the Pokemon Center in which we can enter and exit. You can have access to the whole project and download it for yourself with a link in the description. All you need to do is to support the channel on Patreon so that I can upload more frequently and high quality content for you. A huge thank you to my new Patreon members, you are awesome! If you don't want to miss the next episode, ring the bell to get notified or join the notification squad on Discord. With that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao!